sit, he said. Please, say please. Red immediately sat and gave a short, short bark. His tail now pounded in the ground and sat in the air. Say pretty please. Bruce told him and Red barked twice. Bryce tossed the biscuit and Red leaped to catch it in mid-air. Feeding a biscuit to Red was like feeding a peanut to an elephant. It slid down his throat so fast that you knew he wasn't as a taste in it. If you wanted to go running, you have to open the gate, Bruce said. But don't even think about doing that until I say the magic word. The past summer, when Red had pulled three of his leaves in Western's traffic, Bruce's father had T H R E A T E N E D to take the big dog away from him. Mr. Walker was worried that Bruce would, would, who was small for his age, was not strong enough to control an extinguisher setter. He had finally. Agreeing that Bruce could keep Red over if he got a book about train, dog training and taught the dog to obey. Bruce had taken the challenge seriously and Red proved to be a good student. Not only did he have now be obey such commands like come here, sit, paw up, Pause up, he also learned to check one of which was to open the backyard gate, but he always waited for Bruce to issue the command. Now Bruce snapped the leaves onto Red's collar, open theme. At the sound of his words, Red stood up, stood up on his hind legs and Proceeds his front paws against the top of the gate. Then he took the latch in his teeth and lifted it. The gate swung open and the boy and dog raced joyfully down the alley to on and onto a sidewalk lined with maple trees. The bare winter branches had just begun to sprout new leaves and the uh, F R I N D E a pile of greens was a D K D D D E L I C A T E as last lays again against the clear blue sky in the front yard of houses up and down the block and plus tulips and D A F F O D I L S had broken through the earth not yet an explosion of co- color as they would be soon, but a promise of what was to come in a matter of weeks. Bruce always took the same matter When the father's afternoon run, they risked to a board cherry house, which was in, located near the end of the block next door to father and Ellie. There was no way for Bruce to get around it when he visited the great aunt, but left to himself, he always had an opportunity 
opposite direction with the positive EX CEP T I O N of Jerry's cousin Connor who lived in Chicago. Jerry who Jerry was the worst person Bruce had ever known. Jerry had put Red Rover origin on her by his Miss Chilling the dog so badly that Mr. Mr. Gordon had agreed to sell Red to Bruce. Jerry had never forgiven Bruce for buying Red and had used every opportunity to make both Bruce and Red live miserable. It was Jerry who had caused Red to run into traffic by trying to ram him with his skateboard. And previous summer, Jerry and Connor, who had been in the summer in Elmwood, had came up with a dog napping scene and caused many ink. Incident people, a huge amount of heartache. To make matters worse, at least so far as Bruce was C O N C E R N E D, Jerry, who was his age, was four inches taller and 20 pounds heavier than he was. He was so E X T R E M E L Y good looking he had an in smile that charmed every dog he came in contact with. Bruce tried to stay as far away from him as possible. But why am I thinking about Jerry now, he asked himself. A T R A U M A T I C event of the previous summer were far behind him. Over the winter, he hasn't seen Jerry much at all except at school when they were in the same English class. Now, as he ran with his dog in the bright April sunshine, there was no M E N A C I N G W H I R of skateboard wheels behind them to disrupt the peace and S E R E N I T Y of the glorious afternoon. Ben was an element scratching his leaves. Lean, lean, L-E-A-N, John Lang at the gallop with his long ears seemed behind, joined me behind him like a rusted binoculars from very first moment. Bruce had seen him. He had thought when most beautiful animal in W O O I L D. They ran just for just over one month before Bruce O E I N E D ran in and made him turn around so they could head for home. As they neared, the house red picked up more speed than Bruce had strength to keep up with. As much as red red loved in the his out means, he also loved going home to gallop up his dinner. The back of gave stern order to Bruce the government to allow him to race inside. Then he entered the yard himself 
and left the gate behind him. When he returned to the face of the house, he was surprised to see Anna sitting on the back steps of death and Babe, Babe, Babe was dropping across her knees like a dog shot blanket. And the envelope from the public has laid open at Andy's feet and she was holding the letter as if it were burning her fingers. I couldn't wait until dinner to open it, she said. I'm glad I didn't because it wasn't what I thought it was. Ruth went over and sat next to her on the steps. He had never seen his sister look D-E-J-E-C-T-E-D. You didn't win? It was a statement rather than a question. I know your disappointment, but there's always next time they probably win the contest against next year. Next year can be about cats, and it says a uh, could think of nothing to say to comfort her. Annie was not a cat lover. She could not imagine her writing a book about cats. It came in second, and it said, now, sending my M-A-N-U-S-C-R-I-P-T back in a separate envelope so they could include a C-E-R-T-I-F-I-C-A-T-E. You got second place, Bruce exclaimed, no longer feeling sorry for her. Then what are you moping? about. Second place is terrific, but the winner, and it says, the winner, she choked on her words, unable to continue. How old was the winner? Bruce said, 14, two years older than you. So what, can you expect the winner had two more years to practice writing stories? It isn't the age that matters, and he said, M-I-S-E-R-A-B-L-Y. The awful thing is the first place winner is Gary Goldman.